She's already gone home. Xiang? Do you think the seismographic data will transmit during the impact? What are you doing here? Didn't you want to... I mean, weren't you supposed to be on a plane, like, hours ago? We'll fight the mob for a seat. At least we have something to do here. Don't we? Elsewhere, chaos. Evacuation plans work fine in theory. In real disasters, few reach safety. As law breaks down, it's every man for himself. Fernando has been traveling for days. He hasn't spoken to a soul. Still trying to reach his family, still unaware of his peril. from Earth, 24 hours to impact. New York City lies more than 1,500 miles from the impact zone, yet only 33 feet above sea level. Fearing a tidal wave from the comet impact, inhabitants have fled inland. Dr. Sattler studies the psychology of preparing for disasters tsunamis, earthquakes, and hurricanes. As Hurricane Emily was making a direct threat on Charleston, South Carolina, I went out and interviewed people and asked them what were they doing to prepare. And what we found was that people who were older, people who had higher income and the ability to buy supplies, but also people who had an internal locus of control, those people who believe that what they do can make a difference to prepare were more likely to prepare than those who had an external locus of control, those who believed that what was going to happen to them was determined by fate or by luck. Rich or poor, everyone's now in the same boat. Money can't buy safety. Public shelters can't hold an entire city. First come, first saved. Some arrive with just the clothes on their back. They presume their stay will be brief, then back home. Only hours to impact. Fernando stumbles on an army barracks. Is anyone there? Easy, 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 easy. I'm down. Hey. Come on. 
Everybody's gone. And they left you to starve? Fernando is still in the dark. No clue why the barracks is abandoned, and no idea it lies 500 miles from the point of impact, well in the danger zone. minutes to impact. Others too remain clueless. The Baka debate how to handle a threat to their village, a rogue leopard. will soon face a more dire threat from a catastrophe an ocean away. This is the latest computer simulation. It shows that when the projectile strikes, it doesn't much matter whether it strikes on land or in the ocean. It heats the ground tremendously, just like a, a super bicycle pump that you've pumped up. The, the temperature gets up to 100,000 degrees. After it reaches this temperature, it expands out at high speed and throws material out several times the Earth's radius into space. At the same time, it brushes the floor of the impact crater away, throws it out at high speed, and removes about six miles of rock from the impact site. Calm down. Easy there. I'll get this car fixed and I'll take you with me to the town. Time's up. Last equals a hundred million megatons of TNT. To stop a comet, a nuke. The nuke fails. The comet hits Yucatan. The crater at this stage is about 60 miles in diameter, and it's lined with partly vaporized and even melted rock. At this stage, the crater begins to collapse under gravity. The floor rises, the adjacent terrain collapses into the cavity, and we're left with a, a lake of lava 100 miles in diameter. It only takes a couple of seconds for these enormous temperatures to cause an expanding fireball. This fireball is hot, initially 10 times hotter than the surface of the sun. Anything within 1,000 miles that sees that fireball will be incinerated. Houston is gone. 4,000 miles away, the ripple effect. Oh no. Impact. That was the EMP wave. An electromagnetic pulse destroys all electronic devices. The pulse wave is invisible but the evidence is not. The signs are in the heavens. A 
electrically charged particles create effects like the northern lights. The tremendous amount of energy involved in an impact of this magnitude uh, would cause the release of charged particles, uh, in particular electrons, which would be moving around very, very rapidly. And these particles would give rise to very powerful electric and magnetic fields, which would induce currents in uh, any sort of uh, electrical conductor. Anything containing a computer chip uh, would probably be destroyed. The pulse waves race around the world. A new dark age for planet Earth. fallout, a cloud of dust and ash. Hey, Sean, come look at this. <laughs> the cloud dumps a burning rain. It's fallen before. Jan Smith has analyzed the comet impact that wiped out the dinosaurs. We have here a special core from the Atlantic Ocean, just one of the many. You have here the slowly deposited uh, sediments of the latest Cretaceous of the Mesozoic era. Every 10 centimeters is a thousand years or so. But then 65 million years ago, we see this layer of green spherules and, and brownish stuff, and that was deposited only a few days, which demonstrates the enormous power of the impact some 3,000 kilometers away. The world's most famous skyline disappears. The homeless have it all to themselves. Soon, They'll be gone, too. The fallout has just begun. After the ash comes the flood. An earthbound comet, a direct hit, the impact ripples round the world. The comet slams into the Gulf of Mexico. It triggers a tidal wave 3,000 feet high, more than twice as tall as the Empire State Building. This initial wave immediately breaks down to 30 to 50 meter and loses more height when it runs into deeper water, but it conserves its energy. Dr. Weiss is a geophysicist who studies tsunamis for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The wave height goes down in deeper water, but it created a longer wavelength, and this wavelength travels to the coast. The tsunami 